Hey guys, and welcome to this video. And in this video, I want to answer an important question, and it's about why I'm still shedding while on finasteride. And to give you a bit more background information about me, my name is Alex, and I have been taking finasteride myself for the last 14 years by microdosing it. And I also did try the Tastrid back in 2011 for around four months. And during the video, I will show my results from both of those treatments. But to get back to the question about why uh, the here are still shedding on Finasteride, like uh, there are multiple things that we need to understand. And one of them is that there is an initial shed when you start with Finasteride that can last from uh, two to four weeks. In, uh, usually it uh, doesn't last longer. Like in my case, I think it was around three weeks before it kind of slowed down. But sometimes it can last uh, a bit longer than four weeks. But if the shedding continues, the basically typical approach uh, one uh, kind of uh, takes is, or assumes is that the uh, DHT is too aggressive and one needs to have a more aggressive approach to it. For example, switching to ERU or switching to Dutasterid. Uh, but what if there is more to the heal loss to begin with? Right? Uh, what if one switches over to Dutasterid or ERU and the heal are still shedding? Like uh, what would be next step? And basically my uh, kind of answer to it is that uh, before you consider switching to more aggressive uh, approach to this uh, DHT angle, always make sure that you do check up your DHT levels, right? Because if you, for example, have been taking finasteride for four, uh, four weeks, they should have been decreasing by 70%, right? And uh, basically if you check them up and they are still high, the basically of course would mean that your DHT levels are on the high range and then you most likely would need to have a higher, like um, more aggressive approach, right? But if your DHT levels are actually below the baseline, then you know that the DHT angle is addressed. And if you are shedding continues, that basically means that there is more to your hair loss than just DHT angle. And uh, basically what we can expect from uh, finasteride or other DHT blockers is we can expect a thickening of the hair and we can expect uh, basically a reduction of the hair shedding, like a reduction of the progression of the hair loss, as well as thickening up, up of the existing hair. And uh, from my experience, uh, basically two first years of finasteride is always the best, right? So it's kind of best time in the, of uh, seeing best results from it. And if you don't have any underlying problems, then basically uh, that's kind of time frame. You will see most of the thickness of the hair, uh, but it won't stop working, right? I have been taking Finasteri for the last 14 years and it still works for me uh, because uh, like the EHT won't spike by itself if you don't do anything specific to it. So basically Finasteri will uh, be effective long term uh, to uh, stop the progression of the hair loss, right? And all those times when I was having hair loss problems, it happened because of other things, right? And here is my results uh, of Finasteri the first year and here's my results of Finasteri the second year. And uh, I also want to add my results of Dutasteride. Basically what happened with Dutasteride is that uh, I did the same mistake uh, as a lot of guys do, is that I assumed that Finasteride was not working anymore. So I decided that I need to have more aggressive approach to my hair loss. And I did switch to Dutasteride back in 2011. And basically back then my hair loss was caused by scalp inflammation. Uh, I had awesome results with Finasteride, but because of scalp inflammation, I started to lose ground again. And in around uh, two and a half months, I was uh, basically thinning out very fast. And uh, because of it, I was assuming that my DHT levels were spiking. I did not check the DHT levels, but I was assuming that they were spiking and I had to have a more uh, kind of aggressive approach. And basically what happened is that uh, I addressed my uh, scalp information with dermatologist back then. And uh, he also prescribed me the Tastri because I wanted to have more potent approach to DHT. And uh, basically by uh, doing treatment for scalp inflammation and uh, taking the Tastri, I was able to uh, achieve those results after four months of taking it. But back to the kind of question, uh, what you need to understand is that hair loss can be caused by multiple problems, right? It's not just DHT angles that uh, is causing the hair loss. And even if you are having DHT angle, sometimes it is best to optimize it even more if you want to have perfect results. Like uh, if you want to have results like I did, then you have to have a, a hair loss treatment that is uh, addressing all the possible un uh, online conditions, right? And the usual typical kind of things that can happen is dermatitis on the scalp. Uh, that's uh, something that I often see for those guys who uh, reach out to me. Uh, scalp inflammation, of course, that I was having uh, and uh, things like for some nutrition deficiencies, but also uh, less common things, for example, like um, diabetes, right? Like uh, thyroid uh, dysfunctions, right? Those things also can affect the hair cycle. And basically, if you have, for example, thyroid problems, then taking uh, uh, or blocking DHT by, for example, finasteride, won't work, right? Because uh, it's not the cause of the hair loss, right? If you address DHT angle by finasteride, but uh, there is something else that's causing your hair loss, then basically that uh, treatment basically won't work. So you have to always make sure that you don't have any online problems before you first, first of all start with treatment or you don't see results. 
uh, of the treatment, the basically means that there is more to your yellow that uh, is not addressed, right? And uh, like our ultimate goal is to um, have as little shade as possible, right? That's our ultimate goal, right? And basically we have to kind of, like if you want to achieve that goal, we have to keep optimizing, right? Uh, and it's not just about basically addressing DHT angle, but you also have to optimize uh, all the areas, like for example, your stress levels, your sleep patterns, uh, nutrition, uh, basically any possible uh, things that kind of affects the uh, hair cycle, it has to be addressed, right? And by doing so, you uh, can get awesome results, right? And this is kind of uh, our goal, right? We want to have as good results as possible. We don't want to just stop the hair loss, but we also want to taking up as a here to absolute maximum that we can uh, achieve. Right? That uh, should be our ultimate goal. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video and see you next one. Cheers.